In this video, we're going to work on some hypothesis tests and problems with two sample means. So let's start with this problem. A test was conducted on two different classes to see if there was any significant difference between the performance of two teachers. The final exam scores of 15 students were sampled in the first class yielding a mean score of 82 with a standard deviation of 2.4. The mean final exam score of the second class was 84 with a standard deviation of 1.7 using a sample of 12 students. Determine if there is any major difference at the 5% significance level. So what we have here is two separate independent groups. The first group of students does not depend on the grades of the second group of students. Now what we need to do is write down the information that we have. So for the first class, I'm going to use the subscript 1. The sample size, N1, is 15. We sampled the scores of 15 students. The sample mean for the first class is a final exam score of 82. And the sample standard deviation is 2.4. Now for the second class, the sample size we could see it's 12 students. So N2 is 12. The sample mean for the second class is an exam score of 84. And the sample standard deviation is 1.7. Now, we want to determine if there is any major difference at a 5% significance level. So our alpha value, let me write that better is 5% or 0 0.05, which means our confidence level is 0.95 or 95%. Now, the next thing that we need to do is write the null and alternative hypotheses. The null hypothesis, well, what do you think the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis is gonna be? Feel free to pause the video and write it down. Now, we want to test to see if there is a significant difference between the performance of two teachers. So we believe that their performance is not the same. So what's being tested is the alternative hypothesis. So those conducting the test believe that the mean performance or the mean scores generated by the class of these teachers are not the same, which means for the null hypothesis, they are the same. That is the status quo. So if mu1 equals mu2, we could say that mu1 minus mu2 is 0 for the null hypothesis. And for the alternative hypothesis, we could say the difference is not 0. But I'm going to write this part down for the null hypothesis. That information will be useful later. Now, the next thing we need to determine is what type of distribution should we use? Should we use a T distribution or a normal distribution? What would you say? Now, if the sample size is large, we want to use a normal distribution. But if the sample size is small, we want to use a T distribution. And 30 is the number by which we can determine which one to use. Since the sample sizes are less than 30, we want to use the T distribution. Here, the sample size is 15, and there it's 12. So the sample sizes are small. So now that we know which distribution to use, our next step is to calculate, or rather find, the critical t values. So alpha is 0 0.05, which means alpha over 2 is 0 0.025. Our next step is to calculate the degrees of freedom. And we have a nice big formula for that. It's S1 squared over N1 plus S2 squared over N2. And the sum of those two will be squared divided by S1 squared over N1 squared. I mean over N1 and then squared. And that's going to be divided by N1 minus 1. And then we have plus S2 squared over n2 and then all of this is squared over 
and 2 minus 1. So we're going to do this one step at a time to avoid mistakes. But for now, let's plug in the numbers. So S1 is 2.4. N1 is 15. S2 is 1.7. N2 is 12. And then let's plug that stuff on the bottom. So we have S1 squared over N1, which is 15. And then square that. Divide that by N minus 1. So that's 15 minus 1, which is 14. S2 squared, that's going to be 1.7 squared over N2, which is 12. And then 12 minus 1 is going to be 11. So let's start with the numerator. 2.4 squared divided by 15 plus 1.7 squared divided by 12. I got 0.62483, and then when you square that result, you should get this for the numerator, 0.390417. Now for the bottom part, I'm going to do each one individually. So 2.4 squared divided by 15, and then square that result, and then divide that by 14. So you should get 0.0105. 3, 2, 6. Now for the other one, 1 1.7 squared divided by 12, square that result, and then divide that by 11. So that's going to be 0 0.005277279. Now let's add the two numbers on the bottom. So it's 0 0.0105326 plus 0 0.005272279. So that's 0 0.01580539 or 54. So dividing these two numbers will give us the answer we're looking for. So the degrees of freedom that I got is 24.7 which we're going to round that to the nearest whole number. And so we're going to say it's 25. So let's put this down here. So now we need to determine our T value, our critical T value, which is going to have a degree of freedom. I mean, 25 degrees of freedom and an alpha over two of 0 0.025. So here we have a two-tailed T distribution table. And our alpha over two value is 0 0.025. Now going down to 25 degrees of freedom, we can see that our critical T value is 2.0595. So that is the value that we're going to use. So let's write that here, 2.0595. So at this point, we're going to draw a picture. So what we need to do is get our calculated T value and compare it to the critical T value. We want to see if our calculated T value lies in the rejection region or in the middle. So the rejection region is what we see highlighted in blue. So the formula that we need to calculate the t-value is this equation. It's going to be x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus the difference between the two means. And we can see that it's equal to 0 divided by the square root of s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared over n2. So this is the estimated standard deviation or the standard error for our sampling distribution. So x bar 1 is 82 minus x bar 2, which is 84. The difference between the two means is 0. And then we're going to divide that by the square root of s1 squared, which is 
2.4, N1 is 15, S2 is 1.7, and N2 is 12. So 82 minus 84, that's negative 2. And then 2.4 squared over 15 plus 1.7 squared over 12. Take the square root of that result, and you should get 0 0.79046. So dividing those two numbers gives us a calculated t-value of approximately negative 2.53. So negative 2.53 is somewhere to the left of negative 2.059. So therefore, since our calculated t-value falls in the shader region, which is the rejection region, we need to reject the null hypothesis. So we can come up with the conclusion that there is a major significant difference at a 5% significance level. So the performance of these teachers are not the same there is a significant difference between their performances. So that's our conclusion for this problem. Now let's move on to our next example problem. Number two, a business owner is in the process of deciding whether or not to invest in a new factory that refines oil in order to meet the high demand for that commodity. A test showed that the old factory refines oil at a mean rate of 3.1 liters per second at a standard deviation of 1.0 using a sample size of 40. The new factory was measured to refine oil at a mean rate of 3.8 liters per second at a standard deviation of 1.5 using a sample size of 36. Determine if there is any major difference at a 10% at a significance level. Feel free to try this if you want to. But now let's go ahead and write the information that we know. So for the old factory, we can see that the sample size, N1, is 40. And the sample mean is the rate at which oil is refined. So that's 3.1 liters per second. But I'm just going to write 3.1. And S1, the sample standard deviation for the old factory, is 1. Now, for the new factory, N2, that is a sample size of 36. And then the sample mean, we have a rate of 3.8 liters per second. And then S2 is 1.5. Now, our next step is to write the null hypothesis and the alternative I said that wrong, alternative hypothesis. So a test is being conducted to see if there is any major difference, which means that the alternative hypothesis is that these two are different. If you don't believe they're not different, you wouldn't really conduct the test. So the no hypothesis is that these two are the same. We want to test to see if they are different, if they're, you know, not equal to each other. So keep in mind, we can also write it this way. Mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero for the no hypothesis, or mu1 minus mu2 does not equal zero for the alternative hypothesis. Our next step is to determine, do we have a T distribution or a normal distribution? So what would you say? Should we perform a z-test with the normal distribution, or should we perform a t-test using the student's t-distribution table? Well, we need to look at the sample sizes. Notice that both samples are large. Both are greater than 30. So that indicates that we could use the z-test for the normal distribution. So let's draw a picture. Just like before, we're going to draw the rejection region in blue. Now, we need to determine the critical z values that separates the rejection region from the fail to reject region. 
In order to do that, we need to determine the area involved. So alpha in this problem is 0.10, which means that we have a 90% confidence level. So the area that is not shaded is 0.90, and the area that is shaded is 0.05. So what I'm going to do is calculate the cumulative area from the left up to this point, because that's where I'm going to put the z value. So that's 0.05 plus 0.90. So the cumulative area to the left is 0.95. Now, using the positive z-score table, we'll need to find the z-value that corresponds to this area. So here we have the positive z-score table with the cumulative area to the left. So we need to find the area value of 0 0.95. 0 0.95 is between these two numbers. 0.9495 has a z-score of 1.6 plus 0 0.04, so that's 1.64. 0.95053 has a z-score of 1.6 plus 0 0.05. So our answer is between a z-value of 1.64 and 1.65. So we're going to average it to and use the z-value of 1.645. So the z-value here is positive 1.645, which means on the left side it's negative 1.645. So now that we have our critical z values, we need to find the calculated z values. And the formula that we're going to use to get that is this one, which is similar to the calculated z values in the previous problem. So it's x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus the difference between the two means, which in this example is 0, over the square root of s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared over n2. So x bar 1 is 3.1. x bar 2 is 3.8. mu1 minus mu2, as we said before, that's 0. s1 is 1, and n1 is 40. S2 is 1.5, don't forget to square that, and N2 is 36. So 3.1 minus 3.8, that's negative 0.7. And then 1 squared over 40 plus 1.5 squared over 36, that's 0 0.0875. Once you take the square root of that, you should get 0.2958. So negative 0.7 divided by 0.2958, that's going to give us a z value of negative 2.366, which is less than negative 1.645. So this z value lies in the rejection region, which means we must reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. So thus we could say there is a major difference between the two factories at a 10% significance level or at a 90% confidence level. So this new factory is definitely a lot better than the old one. There's a big difference between the two.